are great, but very rarely does an athlete make such an impact that they begin to transcend their sport. You know, those times where an athlete is creating so much buzz that people who don't even follow the sport know their name. These athletes hardly ever come around, but when they do, you know something special is going on. Growing up, I used to skate, so of course I know who Tony Hawk is, but my mom also- I, I don't want to skate when I know who Tony Hawk is, bro. That nigga was a legend, fuck knows who Tony Hawk is. In a sport that tends to only retain the most diehard fans, Usain Bolt was so incredible that he became a household name. And it also helped that his name sounds like he was destined to be the fastest man of all time. <laughs> Ask the average person to name any golfer and they'll instantly say Tiger Woods, followed by no one else. There are very few athletes that reach this level of popularity, where they almost single-handedly lift their sport to new heights. And right now, women's basketball is home to an athlete that may just be next in line to be one of these transcendent athletes. Caitlin Clark has only been in the WNBA no for one season, and she is already the face of the league, drawing in more fans, viewers, money than ever before. But it hasn't come without harsh criticism, some of it targeted at the disproportionate admiration and attention being given to just one player, and some of this criticism claiming she simply isn't nearly as dominant as we are led to believe, a product of the sports media machine pushing their golden child. Is Caitlin Clark really as good as advertised, or have her talents been overblown for the sake of the WNBA and the future of women's basketball? And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Taiji. Today's video is sponsored by no. DraftKings. Don't gimbal, guys. If you're gonna gimbal, gimbal responsibly. Eighteen million viewers, a number that shattered every NCAA women's record, exceeded the viewership of any men's tournament game over the last half decade, and even surpassed every single NBA Finals game since 2018. The game was a groundbreaking spectacle, with people who had never even tuned into a single basketball game in their life turning on the TVs to see who would be crowned champions. The majority of this flocking attributed to one player, Caitlin Clark. Her unbelievable range and record-breaking performances proving to be must-watch TV, the true testament of her greatness and impact, all of the doubt and borderline detest that quickly followed her ascent. Some fans and players, both past and present, questioning if her talents would translate to the next level and if the horde of fans she inspired would follow. They did. Her WNBA debut attracted the most viewers of any WNBA game in the history of ESPN. Indiana's home game attendance jumped from an average of 4,000 fans last season to an average of over 17,000 fans this season, a more than 400% increase in just a single year. Transactions in the Fever's team store jumped over 700%, and WNBA viewership has skyrocketed to levels that even Clark's biggest advocates could not foresee. Game four of last year's WNBA Finals drew in more viewers than any WNBA game over the last two decades, with 728,000 fans tuning in for the game, living up to the hype as one of the most anticipated games in the history of the league. This season, there were 22 regular season games that eclipsed that mark, 21 of them drawing in over a million viewers. Even crazier, 18 of those 22 games featured Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever. But the most revealing evidence of the now dubbed Caitlin Clark effect is the fact that WNBA viewership has nearly caught up with NBA viewership in 2024. On ESPN, NBA games averaged 1.56 million viewers this past season. WNBA games averaged 1.2 million viewers, a number that was inconceivable just a couple years ago. But Caitlin Clark's soaring popularity has been a point of contention for many fans of the WNBA. Frustrated that in a league that is bursting with talent right now, it's all just being overlooked for the poster child of women's basketball. Do Caitlin's abilities actually warrant the hype? 
In just her rookie season, Caitlin broke over a dozen league and franchise records, including the WNBA's single season assist record. She set the record for the most assists in a single game. She received the most all-star votes of any player in WNBA history, set a new league record for double doubles by a guard in a single season, scored the most points of any rookie in league history, and became the first rookie in WNBA history to put up a triple double. Just this past week, it was announced that Caitlin made first team all WNBA, which makes her the first rookie to make first team all league since Candace Parker did it 16 years ago. Turns out those awe-inspiring performances from her days in college did in fact translate to the pros. Because even against the best defense in the world, she is pretty much an offensive cheat code. Throughout her rookie season, with points and assists, Clark generated 45.2% of all points produced by the Indiana Fever. For perspective, she has a larger offensive load than every single player in the NBA last season outside of Luka Doncic. And she's a rookie. But to really understand Yo. Caitlin's unparalleled <laughs> offensive Yo, prowess, the? here are the Yo, two what? most productive offensive That's seasons insane. in WNBA history on a scale of points generated per game. And among these seasons, you'll find the greatest players in the league's history. Lisa Leslie, Tamika Catchings, Cheryl Swoops, Candace Parker, and Angel McCautry have tons of seasons littered throughout this chart. Climb towards the top and you'll find seasons from Asia Wilson and Cynthia Cooper. But with four of the top 10 most productive offensive seasons in WNBA history is Diana Taurasi, her 2006 campaign being the best of them all, producing 33.9 points on the top. Game. And then there's Caitlin oh Clark, my God. who is already the most potent Yo, offensive what? player in the history of the WNBA in her Ta rookie she? season. Ta Women's she? Hoops has never seen a player like this. And as absurd as her numbers are, how she puts up these numbers is just as incredible. Here are the players who attempt the longest three-pointers on average in the NBA last season, with Trey Young leading the league with the deepest three-point attempts with an average distance of 27.94 feet, and Damian Lillard and Stephen Curry just a shade closer. Despite it still being worth the same amount of points, the longest shooters in the NBA are stepping four feet outside the three-point line on their attempts. But even amongst the deepest shooters in the world, Caitlin Clark is on her own island. Because throughout the 2024 regular season, her average three-point distance was 28.1 feet, which is not only further than any player in the NBA and in the WNBA, it is a whopping six feet out from the WNBA three-point line. Has Caitlin Clark been worth all the attention and hype that has engulfed her over the last two years? Yeah, I'd say so. She didn't just have a successful rookie season. She had one of the best rookie seasons in recent basketball history. And this isn't just to her benefit, but the benefit of the entire WNBA. Because the seismic boost in the WNBA's popularity this season is not limited to those turning on the games to see what she'll do next, it can also be found in the fans actually showing up to the games. Looking at a chart of the average attendance of WNBA games since the inception of the league in 1997 will tell you a story of a league that has seen their fair share of good days and bad ones. In 1997, there were only eight WNBA teams, all with really healthy attendance numbers due to the excitement of a new women's league. The league quickly expanded to 16 teams with a handful of teams <laughs> emerging as fan favorites, like the Washington Mystics, the Phoenix Mercury, and the LA Sparks. But with a massive league expansion came a nearly equal retraction. Many teams folding along the way, such as the Soul, Fire, Miracle, and Sting. But it wasn't until COVID where the league's once steady fan base was wiped out. In 2020, there were no fans in attendance due to COVID protocols, and when play resumed in 2021, attendance was at an all-time low, a number that has been quickly rising in the few years since the pandemic, but has specifically seen an explosion this season, where for the first time, league attendance was higher than the WNBA's inaugural season. The Indiana Fever seeing the highest attendance numbers in league history, nearly selling out every single home game. In a league where attracting the casual fan has been a seemingly insurmountable task, Caitlin Clark has defied the odds by not only drawing in new fans for her and her team, but rising the tides for the entire league. This is completely unprecedented, at least in the WNBA it is. But there was a time when the NBA was facing similar struggles until a pair of players showed up and changed everything.
After the success of the Celtics in the 1960s, the NBA's growth and popularity Who had come to a grinding halt in the 70s. The league had Who a rampant magic. Drop. An emerging rival league known as the ABA was picking up steam, and the NBA didn't really have a face Who to is propel the league into the next decade. Jerry West was on his way out. Kareem was incredible, but he didn't really have the personality or charm that fans gravitate towards. Bill Walton's prime was cut short due to injuries, and many Who fans felt the Lakers Irving's in introduction the 80s. to the league after leaving. The, the ABA 80s? in 1976 was yeah. a bit short Early of 80s? what was advertised. Many games were lucky to see even half capacity in attendance. Many teams were losing money. The NBA had fallen to a quote second tier sport behind sure. the NFL, MLB, and NHL. All of this culminating to the point where some networks infamously had NBA Finals games on tape delay in the late 70s due to low ratings. The That's league was tough. in desperate need of a generational, transcendent superstar. Lucky for them, they, they got two. <laughs> the most popular rivalry in the Yo, history of college basketball. Them boys hate each other. Yeah. Magic Johnson propelled the league to but new they heights each other in the league, transforming the NBA from a second-rate league Which into is a behemoth of sports and entertainment. A tandem that many longtime NBA fans say saved the NBA. Let's well, give me goosebumps. They go lie. Caitlin is the second coming of two of the greatest, most important figures in the history of basketball. But her impact on the sport at such an early stage in her career has reached a level reminiscent of some of the most influential athletes of all time relative to their sport. Because her popularity hasn't just affected her, it has had a cascading effect on players across the entire Versus WNBA. Cascading, Clark has bro. essentially become the gateway to net. NBA fandom for many people. Net, not they come net. to witness the phenomenon you know that saying? she is like, and end up fishing. staying once they see just how awesome the league and its players are. Players around the league are signing groundbreaking endorsement deals. Teams now have their own Daishi. planes and new facilities. Daishi. Many WNBA players have become household names, Daishi. some of the most recognizable figures in sports today. There is real, genuine discourse about the games and the players right now that exists beyond the diehard fans. Conversations about the WNBA are now no longer about the legitimacy of the league itself, but instead about its players, records being broken, rivalries, the playoffs, title hopes, the draft, and up-and-coming prospects. It's understandable that Caitlyn's explosion in popularity has caused a lot of tension. Why is she getting all the attention when there's tons of great players around the league doing great things? The answer to that question? Well, that depends on who you ask. But there's no denying the widespread impact Clark has made on the league in just a single season. For years, players in the WNBA pushed for people to give their talents and their skills and the product a chance. And in record numbers, people finally are. Now, what it took to get them to tune in may not be the most ideal circumstance, where for many casual fans, one player is overshadowing the vast majority of an entire league, but it's a thousand steps in the right direction. Whether the Caitlin Clark effect will have a lasting impact on the league and retain these new viewers and fans and continue to draw in more in the future is something that only time will tell. But one season in, and she is on a path to being one of the very few truly game-changing athletes of her generation. And yes, she's got all the talent to back it up. Ooh. Ooh. Yo, do you love a man, bro? bro? His people be giving me goosebumps, bro. I swear. <laughs> bro, the way you be talking, the way you be editing, or whatever, the way you put the whole video together, be giving me goosebumps. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Yo, you need these people, you know what I'm saying? You need people like Ellen Clark, I ain't gonna lie, bro, to just not only, like, bring in more people and just, just to, just... To inspire, you know what I'm saying, bro? You have people like Barry Sanders, like um, Randy Moss, like <laughs> like LeBron James. You know what I'm saying, bro? You know what I'm saying? And they they, they elevate the game, you know what I'm saying, bro? Boom, Caitlin Clark's here, broski. But there's all these most, all these low 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 people down here, low churning them, you know what I'm saying? Who are inspiring to be like her, who are grinding every day, you know what I'm saying? She raised the bar a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Now, now people that like, go into the league, and I said, they're only going to be better. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's only going to make people better. So, hey, W, w, w Kill the Card, W Low Grind, W Low Video. I'll see you in the next one. Like, subscribe. You know what I'm saying?